Okay, you done eating, David? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Let's uh, warm this thing up. Okay. Look where we okay. need to go. David, this is Ham Radio Now. The most important. Wait a minute. I got to survey the folks that are, that are guests here. Yeah, I think I can bully them into this. The most important <laughs> amateur radio program on the internet. There you go. And let's push this thing in and uh, stick up a uh, title. Do I remember where the title is? Yeah. Where it never is heard. We've got some other alternative titles we'll work out on, on this in a little bit. And the yep. bands are all open all day. All day. I'm hoping you guys out there did your homework. I gave you homework. Hoping you did it. So um, now let's still trying to learn how to push all these buttons here. I'm going to send you back to uh, the small screen and uh, here are our guests. Okay. Attention guests. Pay attention. <laughs> here, huh, attention. Oh, hi. Um, <laughs> you're, on, you're on television. <laughs> so w what we're here to talk about, and for those of you that saw the preview show, it is the ARRL board of directors decision to create a code of conduct for themselves. Um, that uh, many hams are considering to be very restrictive on what our directors and vice directors are allowed to talk to us ARL members about. And everybody here, on the panel has had something to say about that. And I'm not sure I remember where everybody's title is. Let's see. Um, okay. We'll start with uh, rich, rich Moseson, W two VU <laughs> and, um, rich is editor of CQ magazine. Welcome back to ham radio. Now been a little while. Thank you. Yeah, it has been. And we have an audio audience as, as, <laughs> uh, as big as the video audience. So I need to get all you guys to talk a little bit. So some people know what the voices <laughs> are going to be like. So, I'm not. I'm not sure. Well, what I'm to, happy what to be. I'm happy to be back with you, and uh, it has been a while. And uh, glad to be here with everybody. Yeah, and and the uh, December CQ editorial is about this, as will the January editorial, and a white paper. Right, you're different about, different aspects of it. Yep, and a white paper that you're about to publish. So we'll talk about that. Yes. Coming up in just a minute. Let's see who else. Uh, what other titles I've got here? Uh, okay, Dan Romanchik who was on Hamcasters recently, so you're you're um, fresh off. Couldn't be a regular. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. It might be, who knows? <laughs> <clears throat> yep, and um, some calling you author, blogger, kb6nu.com, the no-nonsense guy. I like to think guy. of myself as a ham radio educator as well. A renaissance ham. <laughs> yeah, and also regularly appearing on the ICQ podcast. Great. Which somehow I didn't get down there this time. Okay, so everybody knows what you sound like, and you, uh, your blog has um, focused on this as well uh, a little right. while ago. It, it's you know fading down the list a little bit, but people can find well, it. It's still I blog a lot. Yeah, an important thing to do, and uh, so that must leave uh, Sterling Silver. I'm no, I'm no. saying <laughs> I'm no. saying that because you perhaps did not hear the show yep. or I screwed up the, your name. Oh, I, I did hear that. It made me <laughs> laugh a lot because you were confusing ward silver and sterling coffee and i always i always joke you know what if you were my father would you ever name your son sterling like <laughs> sterling silver would that be a name that that would be like yep. good i couldn't i couldn't imagine i got enough uh enough uh of an upbringing with my own name <laughs> as unique i guess as it is but yeah hi i'm sterling i'm a jack of all trades yep. uh phasing line podcast podcaster blogger i got a youtube channel and i used to be an awrl youth editor but i'm not speaking for the awrl let's just get that out of the way so yeah well you're not i'm not anymore obviously i'm old 25 <clears throat> years old you're not so. a director you're not a vice director you're not covered by the code of conduct right okay so, so what oh. i'm going to do um is uh this code of conduct thing is um, was was developed last January. I'm trying to make the the titles go away, um, and I think what I want to do is uh, read a little bit of it. Um, it's I think I just yes, I think I just made the tab go away. This is going to be a problem. Reopen, close tab. There we go. Um, I'm going to read a little bit about it because it is pretty extensive in the idea that a a director or a vice director can't 
talk to you, all of you as members or anybody about things that the board is doing unless they are speaking totally in favor of it. And let's see where these, where these things are. Now you can find this and uh, Dan Romanchik, what is the official title? It is not the code of conduct. No, the official title is the ARRL policy on board governance and conduct of members of the board of directors and vice directors. Which we will henceforth refer to as the code of conduct. Even, even the league calls it the code of conduct on their website. Uh, in quotes, yeah. in quotes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, if you want to see this, uh, it's on the Ham Radio Now website. In fact, let me uh, let me show you where, where you can find it right now. That There's Ham Radio Now. Um, do the click to enter. And at least for right now, and eventually it'll this will move into the just the episode stuff. Um, I've got these links here. And this top one, um, Code of Conduct for Directors. PDF. This is the one that has my highlighting because there, this code of conduct is a several pages long, about six pages long, I think. And it doesn't refer entirely to stifling board of directors from making comments about things, but a lot of it does. And so I highlighted those sections just to make it kind of stand out. And so that I could find things that I wanted to, uh, that I wanted to read to you. Um, right. And, and I think, I think you should just point out that there's some good stuff in there too, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, treat the staff with respect and uh, financial responsibility in their decisions. So th- I just wanted to make that point. Yeah. And, and, uh, one of the, um, one of the, uh, the board members that I know that can't talk about it on the record, but is the only one that ever gave me any comments about this at all from, from that level at the league basically said they needed a, a code of conduct. The league had been operating for too long without a formal code of conduct. So they got one, um, which is, which is good. And there's a lot of good stuff in as Dan said, but all of this board members must, um, well, l- let me read to you what some of the things that I picked out. And as I go by this, you'll see a lot of things that I highlighted, but I've only got a few of them that I'm, going to read. Those are the ones with the big red boxes. Um, the, the board members have to support actions taken by the board, even when the board member personally did not or does not, still does not support the action taken. Avoiding, they must avoid any adverse characterization of board decisions that might bring the organization into disrepute. I almost want to discuss every one of these as we go through it, because, you know, what is, what's going to bring the organization into, dis, into disrepute to m- me as a board member saying, how about that policy? Yeah. This, yeah. How about, yeah. How about putting a gag order on all of our representatives? There, there you go. Yeah. It's kind of ironic because <laughs> disrepute is bringing, I had to actually Google this cause I'm, I'm still too young to know these big words, but it's the state of being held low and low esteem by the public. And this code of conduct thing is making us go like, wait, why do they have to, all like unanimously agree in public. Like it's kind of rubs me in the wrong way. Very much. And which one of you guys brought up the Streisand effect? Like, I think it was one of you guys. It was that or Reddit. Cause Reddit always brings that up. Could, but, uh, yeah. It could have been Streisand effect is, is you want to squelch something that is negative by making somebody stop talking about it. And all that did was make everybody talk about it. I, I forget where the original thing was. It was something about something Barbara Streisand must have done. All right. So um, let's move down to find my next box. See all these yellow and red things are, they're important. Okay. So this is the confidentiality section of the, uh, of the code. Um, and this is the one spot where they mention the idea that the board needs to be transparent and discuss things with the membership. Transparency in governance and input from league membership are both important considerations for the board. And, and um, let me stop there and say, that is it. That is where they're going to talk about transparency being important. And everything else is about how transparent you can't be. Uh, board members must balance those considerations, and I don't think we're going to see a lot of balance here, against their legal and fiduciary obligations to maintain the confidentiality of sensitive or proprietary information obtained as a result of board service. Well, okay, sensitive and proprietary information, I'm not sure what that's going to be, but I'm sure they've got some. Um, But it's going to go beyond that. 
In addition, maintaining the confidentiality of the board's deliberations is essential to having full and frank discussions necessary for effective policymaking. So that's their justification. That's, that's the part where they're saying, this is why we need to keep you guys all in line. It's so that when we're in the board meeting, we all feel free to talk about things openly and candidly with each other, but not disclose all of that to the, to the public, to the members. And I'll, we'll give you guys a chance to, to bat that around in just a moment. Let's get through the rest of this here. Um, a board member may and should solicit from members uh, uh, information, input on policy matters being considered by the board. And now this is interesting. Let's just see how far this is going to go. And may informally share with ARL members the final actions taken, and I put this in red, and the issues discussed by the board in reaching its decision. So they are told here that they can discuss issues considered by the board. And I added this little thing of my own that says, hmm, they're, feel, they're free to discuss. Are they free to discuss the pros and cons? You know, what would that discussion look like? Well, let's see what that discussion will look like. A board member may not discuss or disclose the votes of the board or of individual board members, including their own, unless those votes have already been made public. So if there's, if they take a vote and that vote is not made public and not, not all of them are, then they can't tell you how, the, not only how everyone else voted, they can't tell you how they voted. So your director, who have you've elected and put in a position of responsibility on your behalf at the ARL board, can't tell you how they voted on a critical issue unless the league decides to publish it. I think most of the time they do publish those votes, but I'm not sure. Well, again, only, only if a board member requests a, a roll call vote. So those are the only ones that get published because they're right. the only ones Right, if something's passed on a voice right. vote, you don't know who voted for or yeah. against something. Yeah, and the and your director can't tell you how they voted. Based Not on according to this policy. Yeah. That's right. All right, moving on. Um, in a public forum, a, um, a director has to identify their opinions or their discussion as personal opinions and that they are not speaking on behalf of the ARL unless they've been already authorized to speak on behalf of the ARL. But even with such a disclaimer, the board member may not make any adverse characterization of board decisions that might bring the organization into disrepute. And there we go with our second reference to disrepute. And a board member must accept and publicly support board decisions. Um, board members have the right and responsibility to exercise independent judgment and to express dissenting opinions during board deliberations. But outside the boardroom, they must support and respect the final decisions, even if they dissented from the majority view. And I think I've got one more right at the very end. And you can see, once again, there's you know, a lot of stuff that I've got highlighted for those of you that are looking at the video. So go do your homework and go to hamradionow.tv and, and, and download this and see what I'm thinking. And there's also a, uh, an op opportunity to download the original and see it without my editorial comments in it. Um, and also get to Dan's blog and uh, um, I think Sterling's. Uh, so this is the, the, uh, the penalty phase <laughs> of the trial, uh, the corrective measures. This is what they can do if a board member violates the code. Um, admonishment or reprimand, privately or publicly. Remedial action, doesn't say what that is. Removal of um, board-related assignments or loss of duties and privileges. So they can, you know, the board members get things to do and they can take those away, make you kind of ineffective. Or actions initiated to seek removal from the board as an officer. Uh, or as an officer, so they could they kick you out. I haven't uh, gone and done the research to see what um, procedures the board has to follow if they want to they remove can't. someone. They can't. I, I I did research. They can't. They can't. Based on based on in Connecticut, based on Connecticut, if they're voted in by us and represent us, they can't. Okay. I, I guess I want to follow up on that point 
um, for a moment um, because there is something that they are alleged to be doing, to have done and still to be doing and still can do. Um, and that sort of takes us into a corollary of this because one of the directors at the Visalia DX conference last April um, was discussing at an ARL forum this policy and that um, <clears throat> that member was censured for it. Yeah, let's see if I've got, uh, yeah, this is, uh, this is the ARL's own story about that censure. Um, acting on the recommendation of the Ethics and Elections Committee, the uh, Board of Directors has publicly censured one of their own, ARL Southwestern Division Director Dick Norton, N6AA, um, to censure him for criticizing the Code of Conduct. <laughs> That's what they call it, the Code of Conduct. Um, for board members, uh, by virtue of his characterization thereof, and thus, and criticizing publicly the collective action of the Board of Directors um, in adopting the Code of Conduct. So th what they're saying is that, um, is that Dick Norton, and this is a picture of Dick the fellow on the left, um, N6AA, and this uh, this is a picture from the Visalia conference, um, and it was uh, provided to us by um, N6TV, um, Bob Wilson, N6TV, who took a lot of pictures from the uh, from the conference. Uh, I'm not sure who the fellow on the right is, but N6AA is uh, currently a director on the left, the one that was censured. Um, and what people have told me, people who are in a position to know, people who are familiar with the matter, whose names I cannot disclose at this point, have said that this is the, the league's method for removing a board member that is causing them trouble. And that is that they find something to pin on them, censure, ethics violation, or something, and then prevent them from being able to run for the board at the next election cycle. And that has happened to um, the director for the Southeastern Division, Doug Raymond, uh, K4AC. Um, he was charged with an ethics violation and not permitted to run for the seat that he had been holding. Uh, so that's now occupied. Um, my memory is failing me. I know who it is. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting old. Names are... Are becoming more the and more. Current director is, is Greg w Sherratt. Oh, Greg Sherratt, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so Doug Raymond last year was uh, um, unable to run for the seat because of what was charged as an ethics violation. Mm -hmm. um, and there was a recall petition for Greg Sherratt that didn't didn't succeed. We we did a show on this uh, at last uh, the last Orlando, um, and. That reminds me, that's the first time that I heard something unusual because, well, this uh, code of conduct was instituted in January. Uh, I don't think I became aware of it until like June. And I know it was out there. It was probably published, but, I, you know, I, I wasn't keeping my eyes open for it. Did, when did you guys? The code of conduct was adopted after the non-election in the Southeast Division. Right. You know, one of the, one of the strange things about this non-election is that it wasn't an election um and the, the way that it was carried out is what we criticized back in march um yeah. i don't know the nature of the ethics violations that were alleged against doug raymond and i i don't really want to know them um but apparently this is based on something that happened after the ballots were mailed out but before people were able to start voting. And rather than the league saying, oh, we've got a problem here, we're going to have to cancel this election and resolicit nominations, they simply made an announcement that Doug's opponent had been elected. But by whom? There were no votes cast. Um, so... This was the, the beginning of this, this kind of strangeness on as far as elections go. Um, that they kind of just made Doug disappear. And it's, it's noteworthy that in Doug's term on the board, he was a leading proponent of more openness and transparency. Mm -hmm. And the 
actions that were taken against him were, were done basically in secret. The members of the division were never informed that he was disqualified, and they were simply told that his opponent had been elected uh, long before the close of ballots coming back. And, and I, I, you know, have nothing against Greg. Um, I, I know him. I like him. Um, it's just a, a very unusual way to conduct an election by not having any votes. Yeah, I think, and then I think the way that they uh... in in the Atlantic Division, where the current vice director wanted to run for director, and he was informed that he was disqualified by the elections and ethics committee um, for an alleged conflict of interest. When he asked to be told exactly what that was. Um, my understanding is that those requests were ignored um, when he asked for a hearing before the full board, which he's allowed to under the bylaws, it was denied. And again, there was no announcement about this to the members. There was simply a cryptic line in a news release that said that the current director had qualified for re-election. And there was no election. So twice now, board actions have resulted in candidates being disqualified, but the members in those divisions were not told that and were not given an opportunity to either vote for the person anyway or have a renomination process to have a valid election. Um, and this seems to be a growing pattern. Yeah, you did the the Doug Raymond story in um, in the what was it, the March editorial March issue in CQ. Yes. I think the and, way that 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 works technically is that if a uh, if a candidate for director or vice director is running unopposed, rather than conduct a one person election, they just declare that person elected. Um, and I think they'll use that word elected. And so if they after the ballots were mailed out. Yep. But if there's a um if if there is um if there's someone is disqualified, leaving only one person left on the ballot, that's a one person election and they go ahead and declare that person elected. So I think that's the way they, they get around doing that. Yep. Um so uh Let's see. I'm going to take a moment. I got to do my commercial because I remember that I forgot to do the commercial. <clears throat> so yeah, uh, let's let's put uh, put David and me up together here. Ham Radio Now is brought to you by you. So if you enjoy the program and uh, get something out of it, uh, stop by hamradionow.tv. Find Arvin. There's my Arvin. There's David's Arvin. Arvins are all over the place. Yeah. HamRadioNow.tv. When, when you're doing your homework and checking those articles, you can also click the pig and uh, help uh, help keep us on the air. So that's the commercial. And now back to the panel. And goodbye, Arvin. David, you wanted to describe a little bit of the dis the, the structure of the league because as as many members as they got, they many of them are not into this politics, which means that, um, you know, we're boring a lot of people. If they're even bothering to watch, if they're not out there watching a football game, if there's, if they're watching this later on, it's like, um, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd kind of rather go over to ham nation and build a pine board transmitter. Um, so, uh, <laughs> they can do both. They can do they, both. They can, they can do both, but, uh, and we'll, I guess we can discuss why this is really, you know, kind of important, right? But what's the, what's the structure that we ought to know about? Well, you know, I, I think it's important to understand, you know, the, the, the thing that caught my attention to this, um, you know, first of all, I personally know Dick Norton. He's a good guy. And, um, you know, the, the way the structure is in the field, like I, I'm, an, I'm an EC, right? I'm an emergency coordinator. I have an appointment from the ARL. Um, you know, I work with Aries in the field. And, you know, we have a whole Aries structure. You know, there's district emergency coordinator. There's a section coordinator. 
Um, these are all primarily appointed positions, but there are two positions in each division, um, a vice director and a director. I hope I got that right. Yep. And those folks are elected by us, we, the membership. And um, my hope or assumption is that when I elect a director or vice director to represent me, that they can freely represent me and provide me feedback and, you know, the rest of the constituency feedback about what the board's doing, how the board's working, what's good, what's bad and, and otherwise. And, um, I think the thing that, that stuck, stuck with me when I, when I read through all this and we did the research we did was this is structured much less like a, um, a membership organization, which it should be, and more like a corporate entity where you have, um, boards of directors that are appointed by, you know, management because they want folks to go like this when somebody wants to make a decision on funding or growth or, um, you know, reduction in force or, or whatever it happens to be. And the, or the ARL is not really an organization like that. Yeah. It's a membership group. And that's right. I get, we can go a step farther and note that, um, th those are the two offices we can vote for that sit at the headquarters level. Um, yes. We vote for our section manager. The section manager doesn't have any that, policy yeah. um, authority. And then the vice presidents and presidents of the league are voted by the board. So they're mm -hmm. a step removed. The only people that we vote for that have policy decisions are the, actually the director, because the vice director the direct, just is- Just a director. Yeah, the vice director right. is a pretty toothless um, position uh, unless the director- um, is not available, then then the vice director can go to a meeting and and uh, and vote in their stead. Represent. Yep. Um, so uh, I want to move now to Dan, and uh, this is the uh, the article that you wrote on your blog. What the heck yep. is the ARL board thinking? And, and that sizes it up for me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you, uh, you know, within the blog, you uh, summarized the um, the points that were made um, in the. Uh, in the code, but you also summarize uh, things that were done at the Vesalia meeting. Right. So, so what I did was I, uh, in, in the meeting minutes, it said that uh, Norton had uh, submitted some uh, letters in support of his position. And so I went out and got a couple of them. And they're in the blog. And one was written by K6FG and the other by uh, Tim Duffy, K3LR. And uh, both of them basically say, you know, this guy didn't do anything. He presented uh, the the facts of the of the code of conduct and opened the the uh, uh, panel for discussion or for questions. And uh, all of the negative comments basically came from the floor from the members. So I, that left me wondering, you know, really what was what was. Why was he censured? What what was the reason for the censure? It did, at least from the supporting statements, it didn't seem like there was a good reason for it. And we don't have either a recording or anybody's um, verbatim uh, uh, transcription of what was said. Now, I haven't right. even seen a good paraphrase of what was said, other than that he just introduced the fact that it was there and didn't uh, didn't talk about it particularly. Um, he, he, I think he said, as he was supposed to, that he supports the league's position because that's the phrase they're supposed to parrot. This is the, right on the screen. Here is the uh, the comments from Tim Duffy. Tim Duffy's yeah, Tim's uh, was the closest. Yeah, Tim is um, uh, involved with uh, DX Engineering. Now, he's a big league supporter, big a contester, um, and uh, appears on the Ham Nation quite a bit. Um, and says he attended the forum, um, as he does every year, and that uh, uh, one of the items discussed at the forum was the new code of conduct. Dick Norton covered items contained in the code. It was clear the audience was not happy about what was being told to them. A number of uh, forum audience participants spoke in strong opposition to certain aspects of the code. Uh, his own personal attorney and uh, uh, ARL volunteer counsel, K3LA, was surprised by what N6AA presented. So this was in April. The, the code of conduct appeared in January. 
So uh, most hams were unaware of it, as most hams still are unaware of it. Um, K3LA uh, is also opposed to the code um, and seeking the audience, seeing that the audience was clearly upset by Dick's presentation um, concerning the code, he walked out of the room. The opposition came from the upset audience, not from Dick Norton. Norton specifically pointed out that he supports the board positions. And uh, uh, But does he really have a choice to say anything other than that? Well, oh, right. Yeah, he's told I mean, he, he's really. told he can't. So, um, so that was, uh, that is what's in your blog. And I've got a link to that as well. Um, on the ham radio now TV website, if you want to take a look at it, but that was, you know, Tim Duffy, who's, uh, you know, probably one of the most well-known, um, and all of these guys are respected, but, um, one of the most well-known of the, uh, um, people making comments about what they saw there. So, um, Take a moment to uh, to do a little show of hands. Um, how many ARL members do we have? Everybody's an ARL member, and I believe uh, we have two. How many life? How many life members? <laughs> yeah, getting there. I, I'm life member since 1974. How far back do you go, Rich? Um, I don't remember when I became a life member. I've been a league member since 1971. Okay. Yeah, I, um, and so this is my old call sign, you know, the original plaque. I haven't gone for a new one. Um, so I, I believe that makes us, uh, it, you know, very well qualified to be doing a program like this. Well, another thing you could ask is how many of us are uh, our uh, ARRL appointees? You know, I'm an assistant section manager in Michigan for uh, training. Yeah, and I'm an, I'm an EC and uh, net manager and uh, areas LAX Northwest. I served I'm four not- terms as uh, section manager in northern New Jersey and spent almost 25 years on the league's public relations committee. And I'm not anything right now, but I used to be the youth editor, um, and I was the last one as far as as far as far we know. And let's see, I have collected um, PIO, uh, public information coordinator. Rich and I were on the PR committee about the same time. Um, I have written numerous articles and reviews in QST. And I have a chapter in the operating manual and a chapter in, I don't have a cat to show yet, and a chapter in the, uh, in the handbook. And I don't think I'll be having another one. <laughs> Not cats, <laughs> articles. Oh, plenty more cats. That's her chapters, huh? Yeah. I think, I, I think my, my QST and the handbook days are probably numbered is at zero. Well, you, you know what? You, you never know. Maybe when this is all over, uh, give well, it a year or two. That's true. It was, they were a lot of work, but they, they, they paid pretty well. I enjoyed it. Uh, it's nice to get that notoriety, and I've got them the issues sitting on the uh, on the shelf, proudly on the shelf. I've also done a bunch of writing for CQ and CQ VHF. I'm also proud of that. Um, so, yeah, we're qualified. We we're not just taking pot shots. I, I guess another important point to make is um, none of us want to burn the ARL down. Yeah, I just wanted, yeah. wanted to add that as well, that, you know, I certainly I am not a league basher. Um, I, I want the league to be as strong and as effective as possible. But as a life member and as a former leader within the league organization and in my current position as editor of CQ, I want them to do it right. And mm-hmm. that's the that's the big problem here is how they're going about doing things and there some of those things are very very questionable mm-hmm. yeah um i'll say one thing i i agree and it's you know we're not saying not to join the awrl like this isn't a reason not to join a lot of people on the internet reddit facebook i think, I think i saw a comment um this is actually to me a reason to join the awrl and i think one of you i yeah. think rich mentioned it earlier like if you want this to change you need to join the awrl and cast your votes and, uh, you know, so we can vote for transparency. And if you don't, then this is what the AWR becomes. Yeah. Um, you know, it gets run by a tighter and tighter knit group of, you know, like an old boys club. And it eventually, who knows where that goes. So. Yeah, this is also not a reason to quit if you are a member. And we see a lot of that. It, you, see, you see that at just about every level, whenever something happens within a group, local radio club um, or or the, you know, the league. Or, or Rich, when you write an editorial that rubs somebody the wrong way, 
oh, I'm going to cancel my subscription. Going to quit yep. the league. Going to quit the local radio club. Um, and generally, those things are not useful, and not productive. So uh, I'm not turning in my life membership. Um, but I, I, as you listen to this program, and if you're a member of the league and you're out there in, next year, those going to be, what was it, five directors? Yep. There, there are, are five directors that yep. are up. Five directors. That voted, that, that voted, you know, yes, to both the Code of Conduct and, and uh, N6AA censure. Yeah, this is um, this is from <clears throat> from the special meeting that that did that. These were the directors that were uh, were there, and uh, down here at the bottom of the um, the bottom of the document, um, the directors that voted for the censure were um, Carlson, Olson, Norris, Williams, Lysenko, Bloxham, Frenet, Pace, and um, Boner, uh, Allen, and Surratt. They voted aye. Abernethy, Norton himself, and Woolweaver voted nay. So those were the three directors that, that voted against censuring Dick Norton. He voted against censuring himself. And then director um, Valio um, was abstaining. Um, so that was, that was the special meeting that they held. Uh, so look at your, your board members and uh, your directors and your vice directors and see who's, who's up next year. And I'm not a big fan of being a single issue voter. I don't, I don't suppose any of you guys are, you know, make your decisions based on one thing in any election. Um, but this is a big thing. And I think it's something to consider. <clears throat> it's certainly something to ask a director who is asking for your vote about and say, what can you talk to me about? What can you not talk to me about? And why? Um, so you can make it a two issue thing if you look at the <laughs> um, you can, if you look at the the code of conduct or whatever you want to call it. Um, I, I know that those same five directors that voted for this that are up for reelection also voted to support the code of conduct when it when it came together. Yeah. So there, there's two. <clears throat> yeah, same overlap. Um, the the same yeah. group voted for the code of conduct and then voted to censure Dick Norton. Mm -hmm. I think, um, well, uh, I'm going to slide into um, a somewhat more speculative part of the program. Everything we've talked about so far has been pretty much things that are out in the open, things that have happened and are well documented. Um, and Rich, this is your uh, editorial from the December issue. The ARL is circling the wagons. Just what is the ARL afraid of? Can you um, can you give like a synopsis of that? Do you remember it well enough? Yeah, basically, it's it's talking about the non elections, and but also that uh, it what seems to be and continuing and expanding effort by the league's top leadership to centralize decision making in Newington and to control the flow of information you know for for years and years the leadership volunteers in the league in different parts of the country were given a, a tremendous amount of autonomy in what they did and how they did it and the relationships that they built with local and state served agencies um, and it made a lot of sense because the needs in different parts of the country were different um, things that would work for me in northern New Jersey when I was section manager probably would not have worked for someone in a less populated or less, less densely populated section. Um, and we had to make some adjustments to our section structure and other things like that. Um, I'm which enjoying was your perfectly cat. Fine. And yes. <laughs> um, and now a lot of that seems to be being pulled back that autonomy is being pulled back and being more top-down directed from Newington. It used to be that the staff served as, as primarily a resource. Um, they would provide assistance. They would provide guidance. Uh, you didn't work for them. They worked for you. And now it seems to be going the other direction, that the, the top leadership and the top staff in Newington are running the show with a, a top-down thing, you know, but in during the hurricanes, 
the public information officers were essentially told not to talk to the local media, but to refer any media inquiries to Newington. And there was no media relations manager on staff at the time. Um, so it, it didn't seem to make any sense, except that they wanted to closely control the message that went out. Um, and at the same time, they closed down the public relations email reflector, which served as a valuable resource for helping PIOs coordinate what the message was, give them tips, give them ideas, give them suggestions. Um, and it seems like the, the organization is reacting as though it's under siege, but by whom? Who, who is the enemy? Yeah, is, that's, that's what you wrote right members? here. Yeah. Is it the members? Is it the leadership volunteers who put in thousands and thousands of hours of, of time and effort and, and expense? Um, is it the people who want to serve as directors and vice directors, but whose views may not align with those of the current leadership? It's who is the enemy? Who are we protecting ourselves against here? Yeah. Um, I want to add and, to the list a little bit. Okay. We have a growing level of independent media um, like us and other blogs like you know Dan's blog, Sterling. Um, and I don't know about you guys, but I am finding it more and more difficult to get any official league participation above the level of section manager. We can get ECs, we can get um, uh, section managers, we can get folks involved in MCOM. They come on the show because David recruits them as an EC. But I can't get a director, a, a, a president, or a CEO on the show anymore. And I used to, it, it wasn't, it was, there was always a little arm twisting, but I used to be able to do that. Um, at the very end, I uh, you know, sort of did an ambush with Kay Craigie at a ham fest and you know, dragged her in and you know, made her talk about stuff. And there's stuff she wanted to talk about, you know, things like uh, the Parody Act. But it was, um, it, it's getting more and more difficult. And it's always a, it's a turn down by you should be talking to someone else or uh, we don't have time right now or this issue isn't, isn't uh, resolved so we don't want to talk about it until it's resolved. You don't tell CNN that you'll talk to something, talk about something when it's resolved. You talk about it while it's current. And then if, if something happens, if something changes and there's a resolution, you talk about it again. Uh, Rich, uh, CQ doesn't do tons of journalistic type journalism. You know, that's not what it's there for. Um, right. But do you go seeking comment? Do you get it? Or are you getting a cold shoulder? We haven't really been seeking too much comment um, on things like this. My my editorials, I try to, since, as you point out, it's not a news story. Um in my editorials, what I try to do is look at what is out there in public before the general ham population and the perceptions that may be created as a result of that and comment on that. Um, I don't want to be filled in on behind the scenes workings of something that's going on, uh, the, you know, the, the reasons for a disqualification, for example, that were not provided publicly. Um, because what I view my role is, in cases like this, is to be kind of a representative of the ham public and to use the information that they have available to them and comment on that, on how things are being perceived. And suggestions for ways to improve that. Um, yeah, I think you have, so about as, you have about as big as an investigative staff of journalists at CQ as we do here at Ham Radio now, <laughs> which is to say we don't have one. Right. <laughs> um, is, is Ham Radio too small to have real journalism? No, I don't think so. Um, it's a question I mean, of, I'm talking of about, budget. You know, New York Times, Washington Post, CNN type journalism it all depends on somebody if whether somebody's willing to do it for free basically <laughs> um yeah. you know 
of of the the groups that we're looking at here, we probably have the largest budget, which is about a dollar two eighty, um, and uh, or at least the largest staff. And we don't have an investigative staff. We don't have a, a reporter staff. We rely on contributions from our readers, um, and we share perspectives with people. You know, we had a couple of, of articles a few months back about the Parity Act and questions that were raised in regard to whether it's the best deal that we could be getting and whether there might be problems that come along with it. Um, these were offered to us by people with unique perspectives. Um, we don't have the resources to field a reporting staff to go out and, and dig up stories. And I'm sure that none of the rest of you do either. Sterling, you feel like an investigative reporter? Nope, not at all. Once in a blue moon, um, I kind of started to start to see patterns. Like my, my article on, it was a huge clickbait thing, but I really had a, a point that they're not killing, like camera is not dying, but ham radio is changing. And I've been looking over the last, uh, I've been in ham radio for about almost 10 years, about eight years, I think. Um, and I've been seeing like gradual shifts in technology. Hamish radio is starting to really take on that new role. And, you know, here, yeah, what we're talking about, um, I've seen patterns of clubs, smaller clubs, like, uh, um, like earlier this year, we had the Florida repeater council debacle with Brian. Um, we had Sarah S E R A, the Southeastern repeater council. Um, they, I think a guy on Reddit like released the repeater database, and then it threw out this whole debate about public repeater databases versus you know keeping it private, using it for you know membership only, that sort of thing. So, um, but yeah, I, I guess I'm opportunistic in, in ham radio. I don't think there are many that many people spending a lot of time on on investigative journaling and really you know figuring it out. It's it's all about you know what you what you can just kind of glean from you know things like these where we just come around and talk. Yeah. Some of that is. I think um, we all have to keep in mind, Gary, that it's a hobby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. exactly, exactly. And 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 how much of this does the audience want? You know, if if there was a lot of interest out there in the amateur radio world for, um, you know, self investigation, looking at the league, um, looking at anything else, you know, maybe corrupt the expeditions or whatever, I the money would be there to fund it. And you know, as you guys are, or Rich, as you're noticing this, it's not, you know, no one wants to pay for that so much. By the way, did I mention ham radio now is brought to you by you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I believe it or not. I mean, yeah. I, I've only started, I've only had phase in for a little while, but you know, we immediately out of the gate was like, Oh, this Patreon thing, we're getting on that train. But I think we get a total of $6 a month for a while. And now we're at, I think so yeah. we had 15 for a minute and then everybody was like nah I don't want to pay for this um, but we're still going to do it it doesn't mean you know we're going to just throw arms up and says nobody wants to pay for it we're not going to do it that's not what it's about it's about you know we want to you know send the message uh, you know and we just want to talk about ham radio yeah and, and I do better I do better at you know fundraising for shows like the Tapper Conference and stuff like mm -hmm. that um People have actually watched this. Yeah, uh, th I mean, th but there is there is there's definitely a core of hams who who want to know this sort of stuff. I'm mm -hmm. being encouraged. I think Rich, you're being encouraged. Probably uh, Dan and and uh, um, and Sterling, you're you're all being encouraged to look into this because nobody else is. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, and you know, the, I think one of the, one of the interesting points I think is you know we had a, we we don't have a history of this in ham radio, but you know, and I think it's a question of how far the ARRL can push it before somebody finally does more, if you will. Like, like maybe maybe we got to find somebody to to fund division directors in these in these races or something. I don't know. You know, Can't if be. if there isn't any if there isn't any interest, we're going to get what we get. But man, I I just hate to see it that go that way. Yeah. Yeah, coming from a youth perspective, like I want to be the next, you know, section manager or division director or something. Or I'm not me personally, but like pe right. people like me, you know. And this and and so it's really good for me and those my age in ham radio who really are, you know, um, invested in the hobby. Um, 
to know this, to be able to work around it. Um, earlier in the emails, we were talking about um, before the show, what do we young people do about this? Because we're all told, like, you just spin the big knob. But I don't think this is a thing where we just need to turn a cold shoulder to it and ignore it. You know, we need to, first of all, vote, you know, vote in who you want. But then what can we do as members to call for a change? Speaking realistically, I think um, in terms of the number of people that will see the show, unless things blow up way beyond what I expect, th this is you know, this will be you know tossing a pebble in the pond you mm -hmm. know, to get people to pay attention. But most league elections are popularity contests, awareness contests. An incumbent has a big advantage over a challenger. Uh, once in a while, I see an issues based race but like like you know most political races you know outside of ham radio just ordinary general politics a few and often not all that uh germane issues tend to dominate the the, the race and the real business of governing or in the league's case the real business of getting things done are not what people are fighting about they're you know they they find some tangential issue the, to focus on one you know little thing well this may be one big thing and so again for those of you that the five of you that have a director's race coming up next year talk to your director buttonhole them at a ham fest see what they got to say about this and decide how you want the league is doing a lot of other stuff besides just running itself um i don't know how much of that is controversial or how much of that is uh, subject to um scrutiny We, we see them announce things once in a while. They have, um, you know, some committees that, uh, that work on things. Um, but, you know, all, all those things, all those things I think have an effect. And what, what I've called for, and I've called for this in my blog several times is I think the league needs to focus itself on, on in, increasing the membership. And, and, and this, that's almost, almost exactly the opposite of what they're doing now. But, the reason they need to do that is because without members, they they've really got nothing. And and by alienating members with stuff like this, it's just going to reduce the number of members they have. You know, we talked before about uh, 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 people reading stuff like this and say, "Oh, I'm going to quit the AWRL." Well, if you read the comments on my blog post, or like today, I was at a ham fest. The three guys that came up and talked to me had read my blog post, came up to me and talked about it, all said that, oh, I'm, you know, I'm ready to quit. And, you know, that's exactly the opposite of what they, what the AWR really needs to do. They need to increase the membership and get the membership more involved in the organization. Otherwise, they're going to, I mean, already they're slowly sliding into irrelevance, and this is only going to accelerate it. Mm-hmm. That's well, yeah, my opinion, anyway. No, absolutely. The comments in the chat room, and, and I and I commented the same thing back there too. Is like, if you want to fix things, quitting it takes your dollars away, but but quitting doesn't. It takes your vote away too. If if you want to if you want to fix it, you need to stay and you need to vote. You know the reality is, and and I talked to, um, you know some higher ups in the ARL in the last couple of days about this. The ones that I could talk to and all off the record because they can't talk to me on the record and and they said if you look at what happens in a director or a vice director's election even a section manager's election it's like 20 percent even show up and most of the rest of the membership treats it you know it's a magazine subscription right. and they don't come and they don't vote and so um you know to get your voice heard it's just you know it, it's a small percentage and and if we want to push change and we want to move change forward stay with the league because they do great things and and vote and vote in the folks that that question authority and question what's going on here and, and don't like these policies yeah. that's the key we're in that speculative area um and one of the things that to watch for because it hasn't happened yet is um when Dick, um, um, okay, Norton. Dick Norton, Norton. <laughs> yeah, when Dick Norton's term is up, which is, he's not one of those that's coming up next year, I don't think. No. When his term is up, look to see what happens. Does, is he disqualified by the censure from running again? Well, that's been the, that's been the modus operandi, if you yeah. look at what's happened. 
that's how they're doing it because they can't fire him right based on you know connecticut law and the way the organization works we voted dick norton in i voted dick norton in he's my director they can't arbitrarily remove him he's also your neighbor at one point yeah, actually, he was actually, uh, yeah, for about eight years, he was literally my next door neighbor. Yeah. And yeah. he can't talk to you about any of this. He cannot. He cannot. Um, and um, all, all that he can do and what they figured out through their, you know, their counsel is that they can throw up this censure. And, and then when they get to the elections, they can say there was some ethic, ethics violation and they can say he's not eligible to run or remove him from the ballot. Yeah. So, um, would be the league's loss if that happened. I mean, Dick has been director for many years, and he has done a fantastic job. Absolutely, attending your division and uh, being a, a leader of the hobby. And mm-hmm. uh, you know, I, I know Dick through his membership, also long term on the CQ Worldwide DX Contest Committee, uh, where he provides great contributions there. Um, so he is is. Tremendous asset to this hobby, and it would be really a shameful thing if he was to be removed from eligibility on the basis of this thing. You know, just one other thing about the the whole um, gag order part of this code of conduct, if you will, is, and, and this is something I'm writing about in January. Imagine if this code of conduct applied to members of Congress. And I mean, basically we have a a mini Congress here. We we are a membership organization. We elect representatives to go and be our representatives to vote on our behalf. Imagine if your congressman or senator could not tell you how he or she voted on a bill. And if a bill was passed that he or she did not approve of, would still have to say, oh, yes, it's wonderful, Um, Mm -hmm. as opposed to, well, this is what the majority did, so we have to go along with it. It's the law. Um, But I'm going to work to change it down the road, which is, is what you typically have from a member of Congress who's the side that he supported or she supported did not prevail. Um, But you know how that person voted. How are you as a member of this organization supposed to know whether the person who is representing you is doing a good job or is, is representing your perspective? This is what you think they're going to be doing. But how do you determine who you vote for for Congress? One of the things you look at is their voting record. Did they vote to support or not support things that are important to you? And this is the same question that should be being asked by league members in deciding who to vote for for a director or vice director. How did that director vote on issues that are important to me? Is this someone who I want to continue to support? Is this someone who's policy decision on this matter of of importance to me is totally opposite of what I think should happen, and therefore I want to support this person's opponent. Um, If they can't tell you how they voted, how do you know how you should vote? It removes removes the relevancy. It removes the relevancy of even voting. I wonder I mean, if that's th- what it comes down to. I wonder if this yeah. is an in, in sort of a, a an unintended consequence in an election in a um, uh, ahead of an election. The opponent, the uh, the person that is running for the office besides the incumbents, um, they can say anything they want. The incumbent director can only say, "I support the league." That's it. Seems like that would be a. Uh, a disadvantage of incumbency at that point. And that's why I call it an unintended consequence because I think they generally consider incumbency to be very, very valuable. Not every incumbent wins, but mo- most of the time they do. And actually, that's, that's a good point. But, but what I would say is we'd have to, we have to really find the people to run against these people. 
re- against the incumbents. Yeah, I, I'll give you an example. Here in the Great Lakes Division, um, uh, Dale Williams, WAEFK, ran unopposed. And it, that might be because everybody loved him. But, you know, there, there was no opposition this time. So, so if, if there is going to be some kind of, uh, I don't know, opposition party or something here, then, then we're going to have to find the candidates. Yeah. And that, that might be tough. And, and their, um, their position can't just be because I oppose the code of conduct. They have to be in it for oh, no. everything the league is doing. And that, that can, that's also going to be hard. From the realm of speculation and from Rich's what are they afraid of, um, the board is, as we have been informed by people familiar with the matter, that we can't say who they are, that there is a fracture in the board. There's a contingent that is very much opposed to some of the ways the board is doing things. A lot of it is this lack of transparency, but it, it'll involve other issues as well. Um, but it, it, they're not enough to take over, and they are slowly being eased out. Doug, Doug Raymond was one of those guys. Um, so I'm, on, I'm not sure what to say about that, other than that, it what we're being told, and I, you know, there's no there's no proof for this. Is you know, allegation is that is that it is a small clique that is just trying to hang on to power at the board, and. A, a larger group that just follows them around. And <laughs> is, is there a monster coming down your stairs? <laughs> so the yeah, where is that? It's not my house. It's a big cat. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think Rich is in a basement. It looks like a basement to me with pipes and stuff. Does somebody walk it upstairs, Rich? And creaky floorboards above me. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's, it's Nobody's pretty cool. coming to get you, though, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I can I can do this, and, and you guys won't hear it, but the, but the audience will. Rich Moseson, <laughs> we are coming for you. <laughs> Wait till you hear that on playback. He is uh, the closest to Newington of all of us. He is the closest to Newington. <laughs> oh, I hadn't even. I have. <laughs> this is the board of directors, and we're coming for you. <laughs> Wait till you hear that on playback. It's much more mm. effective. Uh, so, um, have you guys got some background on this on this fracture? So this is interesting, and this is one of the patterns I was talking about. Um, And I don't know the full story because I have a terrible memory. But back in some point of the history of the St. Louis Radio Club, St. Louis Area Radio Club, I don't know their first name, um, they had a very similar thing happen. And a lot of radio clubs do this, where they get, you know, two, they they divide themselves, they get two factions, and they eventually split off. St. Louis had um, the St. Louis Repeater Club which eventually split off into the St. Louis Repeater Club and then the St. Louis Suburban Radio Club or St. Louis Suburban Repeater Club. Um, and I forget when, I forget what premise, but um, it was exactly the same thing that caused it. And that's kind of what I see the the future path of the AWR. If they're really like, um, you know, this, this click of, you know, the old boys club I was talking about earlier. Um, and if that continues, then that's what I kind of worry about for the AWRL if, if they don't get that together. I don't think that will really happen. I think the other world is too big for that. But you know, in in the past we've said things are too big to fail, and look how that talk about, turned out. You talk about the National League instead of the the ARL, yeah, yeah. adding that on. It, it, <laughs> it, it, I don't, I, yeah, I, I don't see a benefit for any of us there, and that's right. the, that's the challenge around it all. Yeah, it's confusing. And yeah. and another thing, I so I wonder if they acknowledge this trace in effect. I I know they have to know that this is a problem to the members if. In the very beginning, um, Dick Norton just said the facts and everybody started getting mad about it. So they have to know that this isn't something that's publicly agreed upon by the membership. Um, but And then also this reaction to censuring him is is also not publicly agreed upon, I would, I would imagine. So what is their end goal with all of this? Are they trying to stir up the, the pot and get everybody fired up? Um, on purpose, or is this just an unintended consequence of it? I don't know. Speculation abounds. So, yeah, and and part of me, part of me, and I hate to say this, it thinks that it's a little more sinister because they've seen that all they need to do is wait till they get to the end of Dick's term and say, you know, Dick's been censured. He's not with the program, and while he may be the only one running, or the, you know, the 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 choice of the people, he's not eligible. He can't run. He's not mm-hmm. on the ballot. 
You know, that's that's why my question still stands. What the heck are they thinking? <laughs> what are they thinking? You know? Yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I've invited them to, to anybody to, from the AWR to comment, and I'll invite it again, and I'll publish whatever they send me. Yeah. And I wish they would. I wish they'd come out. And yeah. So are you are you also yeah. getting the lack of response from anyone, director level or above, Dan? So Dan, did you go out to them, or you just you just you just put an open an open question out them for for them to comment? Well, yeah. I I don't know how to how to respond to that. So so I did I did uh, send an email to Dick Norton, and what and what I got back was the comments in support. Of, you know the support comments, so so he didn't make his own take, reply. He, he no, sent he other other people's directly. replies. No, no. You know, well, Dick's 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 Dick has yeah. signed the non-disclosure, and he can't respond. A- absolutely, and I and I'm 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 totally on board with that. Yeah. Right. I guess but that, that's that's how that's how I got the support statements to put on my blog. Yeah, I guess I should mention that I did um, send. Um, Invitations to come on this program to a league president, Rick Roderick, to a CEO, Tom Gallagher. Um, Rick Roderick responded and said, thank you for inviting me. I can't appear on the program. Have not heard from uh, Tom Gallagher. And to several other directors, um, and, uh, and, and some responded and some did not. It was all, thank you, but I can't participate in the program. Some of it because they literally can't. <laughs> I mean, they, their face could be there, and they could say, I support everything that the ARL does, and they'd be stuck. If we wanted to do a show with uh, about election, about an ARRL election, um, director election or vice director, and invite the incumbent and whatever challengers they're going to have, and, you know, David, if you and I wanted to do such a show, what would that show look like? It would be you and me talking to each other. Well, and, and the challengers. Could talk oh, all they the, Well, the, the, the challenge. Yeah, you're right. The challengers could be there. <clears throat> and the challengers could talk, and um, there wouldn't be anything for any of the incumbents to say. Yeah, they would say, I, "I support think- everything that the league has done, and I can tell you a few of my votes, the ones that you already know the about. The ones, the ones you already know about. Yeah, and 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 I think, and I and I'd like to put you know clearly on the record here that um, uh, you know Dan reached out to Dick, and I reached out to Dick as well, and um, I I did not get any comment back from him. Um, one way or another, um, all of the the stuff that I got were was through other sources. The same thing that Dan got, um, and my only assumption, and, and he didn't comment on it in any way, shape, or form, is that um, you know Dick is standing up to the code of conduct as it stands. You know he's following up with it. He cannot say anything that is not in support of what the league is doing, so he's not saying anything, and that speaks volumes. Rich, you have um, a white paper that is ready to go on Monday. You guys will push the button and publish it. Can you give us a little preview? Um, basically, I just have. Um, <laughs> it's uh, excerpts from our December and January editorials relating to the situation that we've been discussing for the past hour here. Yeah, so the January editorial is going to be more focused on, uh, on the, the Code of Conduct. Yes, and on the yeah. censure. Um, yeah. And what we've seen... The, the title is, is criticizing, criticized for criticizing a ban on criticizing. Yeah. Are you going to publish uh, those open to anyone to watch, or is that just for, um, for CQ subscribers? All of our editorials are uh, posted uh, on our website every month uh, with open access. Okay. Is the December one up there now? I'm not sure if the December highlights have gone up yet or not. Um, but it'll go up with them if they haven't. Okay. You know what it's like to have media scrutiny, um, at least from me. <laughs> You've been kind enough to appear on shows where, you know, I believe one of them was called What the Heck? You know, it was back when you were missing some issues and when, when things were you know, economically very tight, and I was asking you difficult questions. You came on and you uh, you answered them. And maybe not quite as... as you know, as, uh, as the way I would want, or as a, I'm trying not to say, you know, as candidly, cause you were trying to be corporate about it. Um, but you answered questions, you appeared and that's mm-hmm. not what we're seeing from the league right now. It was uncomfortable though, wasn't it? 
You know, I talk through you to our readers who are also your viewers. And I say to you what I say to them. And being able to address a large number of people at one time is, is a good way to explain what I can about where things are at and what's happening. Um, and I think that the league people, the leadership of the league, should be doing the same thing. Um, obviously, they're not going to be able to tell you every detail of everything, but it would be good to be out there explaining their perspective and their point of view on a controversial issue. Um, silence is not really <laughs> helpful to them. Yeah. And that's kind of where we started that they have to be able to talk about things candidly amongst each other without everything that they say being scrutinized by us. But where they are right now is that nothing they say can be scrutinized by us. And, and every, everything is private. There isn't a balance. And, and, you know, why it's a membership organization. We, the members pay the bills and what is so secret? What is so sensitive that it can't be discussed with the members? Yeah. That's, that's been my question for forever now. I mean, this is, this particular part of this is not new. I remember back when I was a section manager, which was back in the 1980s, um, asking, if I could attend a board meeting in Connecticut as an observer with my mouth shut, um, just sit back in the room as an observer at my own expense and roundly turned down because I could not be, even as an elected official of the organization, could not be trusted with hearing the discussions that go on during the board meeting. Um, just what is it? that is so sensitive and so important um, that the members of the organization can't hear it. Yep. Um, as you said, what, you know, it's, what is the ARL said, afraid of? Yeah, right. You know, and as I've said in the past, this is not the National Security Council. <laughs> it's a big ham radio club. Mm -hmm. And they didn't like that. Um, but uh, I'm sorry. It's what it is. It's a big ham radio club. And one that does important stuff and that the members should be able to know what's going on. And there's nothing that I can think of outside of personnel matters and, and things like that, that are appropriately done in executive session or committee of the whole. Um, but in the general part of the board meeting, I can't think of anything that they discuss that is so sensitive and so private that they can't have a frank discussion about it publicly as well as privately. Yeah. And I just have never understood the secrecy that surrounds the board. Yeah. And I still don't. Mm -hmm. And, and who gets to watch over what they're doing? Cause. Well, you, you, you said Gary that, you know, we can't really scrutinize. We're scrutinizing right now. We, we can't scrutinize with commentary and we, we know there is no disclosure about what they're doing or no, or no commentary or, or response from them. Yeah. And our, and and our that's, best, that's a reality. I, I have thought for a while and haven't followed up on it very much that the best way to find out what's going on, if the, um, if, if the top management and the top elected level won't talk to me, the director level probably could. And that has been closed off for a little longer than I thought it was, but that's, that's mm -hmm. gone too. So who gets to watch? They're, you know, the fox is guarding the hen house. And, you know, Dan, you can't get, I mean, we can all get um, information the way a lot of the press gets information, you know, a leak from someone who is not authorized to speak on the record that is happening here a little bit. Mm -hmm. It probably will happen more um, if, you know, if we're looking for it. But on the other hand, you know, Again, my investigative staff is a little short-handed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you know, the, the other thing is we can just continue to speculate. And, and 
uh, you know, I, if, if that's what the AWR wants, I'll continue to speculate. Yeah. And well, you know, and, and when you do that in, into the you know a black hole, with it, it just gets worse and worse because what you imagine is probably worse than what's really happening. But you gotta wonder. Yeah, and and I'm really hoping, and and I have received some emails off the record as we've done the investigation from this that once we hit sometime next year, there will be some folks that will be out from under non-disclosure. Uh, we'll hear a little bit more. And this will not be a one episode uh, story. Yeah. 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 It'd be good to bring it back because we don't want to forget about it. And that's what happens yeah. a lot with these sort of things that, you know, this episode drops two weeks later, the next big thing happens and everybody's forgot about this. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But we, we will be back with more of this and with yeah. mm-hmm. hopefully with people that can speak with more direct knowledge of what happened that or without are, fear of reprisal. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's like the senators that have um, announced that they are uh, not seeking re-election. Suddenly, they feel a little bit more open to criticize and speak candidly. And uh, yeah, it's sort of the same thing, I guess. Um, yep. All right. I think we probably hit about as far as we're going to gonna get on this. So um, my turn once again to remind you that, uh, well, let's... let's let me do this with uh, with David here in the in the big screen. Um, do I know where this button is? Well, that didn't look good. My my screen froze for a second. I hope this is still working. Ham hey, Radio Now yeah. is brought to you by you. My Arvin is here. Your Arvin is there. Uh, stop by hamradionow.tv and uh, click the pig if you enjoy the programs. Get something out of them. Mm, send us some money. I don't often enough say that I really appreciate the guys that do because our Patreon has over 60 followers. Sorry about that, Sterling. Um, and is doing pretty well. Uh, and um, individual contributions continue to come in. I, I was hoping when I started this that it would be a living. It is a somewhat decently padded hobby, but it is not, a, it's not the living I was looking for. And, and Rich, uh, you, uh, you, you told, you told me that wasn't going to happen. I talked to you about doing this a long time ago. You said, yeah, good luck with that. I don't know if you remember. Yep. <laughs> uh... But you know, the, the, but the media landscape has changed a lot. You know, back, I was talking yes, about yeah. doing DVDs and you guys did DVDs, but you did the full, full boat Hollywood production. Uh, back in the early 90s. It was a long time ago now. Yeah, yeah. early 90s. That's where we met. Um, yep. And uh, and so things are, are easier and cheaper, and that's the only way this this and the other guys doing shows, even though they may not be the most important amateur radio programs on the internet, that's that's how they get to keep on doing it. So, um, But it, it still takes stuff. I, I would do more. I would do, you know, make it a full-time job, travel, things like that, if the financials were there. Apparently they're not going to be, and now they are distributed among more people, like Sterling. Um, I try. Dandy, do you solicit contributions or anything? Or uh, there's a donate button on my blog, but I don't uh, get too many donations. I, I try to. Obviously, I have my study guides, and that's uh, you know the whole blog study guides that all. I'm trying to make that all work together. Okay, and I noticed that that you have this hire me button on there. Yeah, that I never gotten any <laughs> any projects out of that. <laughs> what what are you that looking? Was a, that was a waste of time. <laughs> what what are you looking to Although do? Although I am available. If anybody wants me to write for them, give me a call. <laughs> Technical writing, project Technical manager. Technical writing mostly, yeah. Project manager. But I'll write any I'll write anything. If you need a writer <laughs> to write something, I'll write it. <laughs> All right. And uh and Rich, you uh at CQ, you're well padded. You're you know, you're rolling in it, I can tell. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How are things up at CQ these days? Uh, you know, it's it's an interesting time to be in the publishing business, as uh, it has been for uh, the last uh, few years now. It's uh, it's a challenge, but uh, we're getting there. Um, you had closed most of the other, all of the other peripheral magazines, uh, um, CQ VHF. Uh, uh, Shortwave magazine, um, World Radio, popular yeah, popular communications, World Radio, uh, just because they weren't 
they weren't car- carrying their weight. And, uh, and so now you're, I mean, you're still publishing issues. So it, you know, you must've done what needed to be done to keep on going. Mm-hmm. This is that uncomfortable conversation that, you know, the, we've, the media, uh, you know, we've, we've tried to incorporate as much of the content as possible into CQ from the other magazines. And, uh, it was very interesting at uh, Dayton this year. I had a whole bunch of people come up to me and say, you know, I've always loved CQ, but the last two years, it's <laughs> been even better. It's just been really wonderful. And I'm sitting there and trying to figure out what have we changed in the last two years? I couldn't think of anything. And then suddenly it dawned on me. We had incorporated content from Popular Communications and from CQVHF and World Radio Online. And we were had made a conscious decision when we had to close those magazines to broaden the scope of CQ's coverage and to cover the entire radio hobby. And as a result, we're running a regular monthly column on shortwave listening. We've had features on spy radios of World War II, most of which were receivers, not transmitters. Um, And just covering a broader spectrum of the radio hobby. And obviously it has resonated very, very well with the readership. And I'm, I'm very glad that they've noticed it. Even if I hadn't been conscious of, uh, what we changed over the last two years and until, uh, it was oh, yeah. brought out to me. So, all right. And Dan, I should have had your title up as I was, uh, giving you your, your plugs and promotions. Is there anything else you want to drive people to here? No, that's it. KB6NU.com. All right. And Sterling, uh, you're just a, you know, a young, young adult, not a kid anymore. Um, yep. working in the a technology, working in the technology industry with a bright future ahead of you until, until you appeared on this show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go back and get my master's in double E and you probably won't see me for a while after that. And then uh, I can redeem myself. I'm sure. Yeah. But yeah. Um, you and Marty uh, got anything thing, got anything cooking? Uh, Marty and I we we just like come together uh, randomly to make a to make an episode. And we've we've got so much to talk about, but we're also so busy. I'm pretty sure he's not on here because you know he's doing homework. I'm sure it's Saturday night or Sunday night. But uh, yeah, I, I I do enjoy, and I think we got a lot of a lot of cool things planned. We just need to go do them. Um, I mean, last time I was on the show, Dan and I talked about doing the two old farts and the two new. I don't know what new farts. Yeah, <laughs> what we didn't we did quite come up with a title. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I want to do something like that. Um, young punks, perhaps. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there <laughs> you go. Old farts and better. young punks. I like it. And so, and then also like uh, the Noisy Key Youth Roundtable. I, I got all these ideas, but. The Noisy Key is a great name. Thing. You just have to explain it to everybody a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll keep it enigmatic and, you know, maybe leave it up to your imagination and put maybe a, an about page on the most obscure part of the website so you can go figure it out yourself if you're so inclined. So All right. it was like the, uh, the faux time podcast. They, they kept getting questions and never said, and then finally they changed it to ham radio 360. Yep. Did they ever the explain whole, why it was faux time? F O. It was yeah, a joke. It was a joke. Yeah. yeah. Somebody mistyped go time instead of G they hit or instead of, yeah, G they hit F, which is right next to G. And they just went with it. So it was an inside joke. And it yep. was funny while it lasted. So. I would I would never do anything that is so inside no one can understand what it is from just reading it directly. Yeah. Except it's, for it's, all of our titles. <laughs> <laughs> <We're never laughs> yep. Well, you know, the ones that work, the titles that work. And for the, for the audio audience, I put up our title, Where Never Is Heard, and, all, and the bands are all open all day. You know, now you know what we're talking about, Where Never Is Heard. You know, it's the gag thing from the, yeah. not gag joke, gag. <laughs> Um, from the code of conduct, um, and, and you guys had some other possible titles. You, David, what did you? You wanted to call the it co- the code of silence. Yeah, <laughs> from the old get smart. Code dun, 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 dun. That's gonna make it a duet. Um, <laughs> yeah, and that that probably would have been good. I, I was thinking, you know, uh, some other somewhere else from this song. Uh, where it could be a little broader, we could have called it where the deer and the antelope play. I mean, even more obscure, but covers the yeah. fracture that appears to be going on at the board of directors. I can, I can imagine all the hams out there when we did the show and we put that title up and thinking in their head, now they're going to be in their head going, 
I'm going to sing the song. I'm going to sing the song and try to figure it out. Where's Gary going with this? Where's David going with this? Oh, I got the never is heard. Yeah. In the no. second stanza. No, they got it. All right. Oh, I was going to, yeah, there you go. There you go, David. Um, so uh, you're also getting rich with me here doing this show. Not not yeah. getting rich as a guest, getting wealthy. <laughs> I am learning tons of things. Let's just put it this way. Yeah. I, I actually uh, paid for your Wirecast subscription. Yes, you did, and thank you. And I'm contemplating buying you a mixer. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's probably going to happen. Because you, right. you got to have a mixer. working on it. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Christmas. And I got to buy, and I got to buy um, Hanukkah gifts for my kids, so. Yeah. And, and that reminds me, you were talking about doing a Christmas episode, and you're Jewish. Yeah, that's okay. Ho holiday. You're, you're, I think yeah, what holiday I episode. You're Jewish, and I'm yes. agnostic, so, you know, Christmas episode kind of, you know, holiday. but I, I celebrate the, the very secular part of that so yeah yeah all right that's okay we, we, we can, might do that we can do something okay yeah. and uh this is me gary pierce kn 4 aq we can um we have enough people that you and i can bow out of the uh official close of the program and let our guests do it the question is do they remember how this works absolutely you guys just did this <laughs> i don't know i get it I'm ready. Just, okay. Just, so, so Sterling knows if Sterling starts it. Yeah. If Sterling starts it, then Rich, you get the second word, and um, and Dan, you get the uh, the closer, and uh, we'll just all wave goodbye. So Sterling, it's all yours. This is Sterling and Zero SSC with the Ham Radio Now show, and we are over and out. Awesome. Seven three. Is that right? Well, well done. <laughs> that was perfect. Seven three, guys. <laughs> Seven three. That okay. was perfect. Now here comes the best part of the show. And it's not as if I'm telling you that I'm I've turned off the recording and the Facebook, because I haven't. Everything is still on. But and and Rich, you probably got this back when you were producing stuff for I think was well, CBS, was it? Yes. Um once once the camera stopped rolling, then the best part of the interview happened. Well, of course. <laughs> yes. And it's it wasn't it wasn't necessarily something somebody would not have talked to you about when the camera right. was rolling. It's just that it didn't come up. So now we have to find out what that is. And in, in writing, Dan and, and Sterling when when you're writing stuff that you know, you can always you know put that back in if you said well you know thanks very much for talking to me and then you know and then something else comes up well you can, you can put that in no one knows that it was mm -hmm. slugged in later yeah guilty guilty as charged <laughs> I haven't had too much of that but like for the you know typos and stuff for like the bigger articles but. yeah and when you're doing the uh, the phasing line podcast because because you have the luxury audio is a lot easier to edit than video is oh yeah because you know with video I'd have to you know, for example, I would do, um, I would do this. I would, uh, say, okay, Sterling, just, um, just nod as if you're listening to me well, talk to I've you. I've lost the audio here. Uh, Did you lose the audio, Dan? <laughs> I've still got it. <laughs> well, we can, yeah. we can hear you, but, uh, you can't yeah. hear us. Can, you it sounded like, uh, I had like I, some... I, I actually, yeah, I, I heard some, some crackling some, too. I heard oh, some crackling. I'm yeah, hearing I'm some crackling, sure crackling. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure where okay. that came from. Yeah, I lost it completely there for a while. Yeah, oh, I think and, it's a, yeah, Dan's think, a crackler. Yeah, and Dan, I'm I'm hearing a little bit of crackling on your voice. So is it's it, is on Dan's. Yeah. So this is another thing that you know Rich knows all about. It's um, you know, just pretend that I'm uh, that you're listening to me and you nod a little bit and you know, uh huh, yeah. And I use that as a cutaway, and then I do the same thing. You know, I'm. <laughs> now I lost your audio. <laughs> I, well, because I, I wasn't supposed to be talking at that point. I was just yeah. you know, supposed to be listening <laughs> listening to you guys talk. But there is something that I need. Um, that as long as when we're all up here, I think I actually did this, but it occurs to me I never do this so that it's actually going to work. Everybody. You gotta, look, so Dan has to sit higher and I do too. Yeah. Look right into your cameras. And smile. And smile. And this will be the... Uh, the poster picture from for uh, YouTube. Hey, cheese. I can't see what you guys look like because I'm looking oh, at my camera. I can't see either. I think we're okay. <laughs> Hopefully they, they did okay. <laughs> yeah. And we need to have a goofy one Very too. Good. 
Okay, we can do a goofy one. Had one with the cat, with Google. <laughs> oh yeah, everybody. <laughs> I had a I had a cat sitting over there, but it uh, it disappeared. Gosh, and now I want to move. I want to move the studio back in the house so I can have cat visits. They don't get to visit me in the garage. Aww. I don't know. My cats have visited me all night. I'm disappointed, except for the before the show. Okay, and so I need to do one more. This will be. Um, okay, everybody like you know like. You were all attentive, maybe listening to me talk. Oh, you can see a cat. There's a cat. Yeah. Yeah. He's chilling. <laughs> Haven't done that shot very much. So. I don't think we did that this shot at all during the show. A, a little I bit, saw, but it's it. always hard to go find. I was like, find. oh, there's a cat, but I didn't see yeah, anything. Yeah, it's always hard to go find. And uh, let me put the title up just in case I want to use the title. And that would be it's it prob- Dan's, so Dan's feeding the static. Because if yeah, you watch yeah. the if you watch the Skype the Skype blue line and I watched it everybody was quiet but Dan and and it was coming through and he wasn't saying anything yeah. okay and it's okay Dan we still love if, you. if we're closer to uh, I, can't, I can't hear anything yeah if it's closer yeah. to the beginning well unplug your uh, headset and plug sometimes, it back yeah, in yeah sometimes it helps on Skype if you unplug your headset for a couple seconds and then plug it back in it'll reset it yeah it's a good thing this happened now and uh, yeah yeah not <laughs> thirty minutes into yeah I won't say exactly at, at when we ended it yeah and so um. Yeah, so when you unplug your headset, it went to the laptop microphone laptop. and stayed there. doesn't sound as good, but it, it's just also not staticky. That's a big coffee cup there, Sterling. You going you gonna to sleep tonight? Oh, it's hot Z- chocolate. With, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. And I've got to go make some for Cindy. Oh. And by stuff, I don't mean the for children kind. Okay, Adult so n- none of us will be welcome at an ARL function again. <laughs> until we I'm have, still going. Until we have initiated. Yeah, the assistant section manager. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and David's still in, David's and still in EC, sure, and we're, I'm still. Well, I, I've, for, been, for I've been I've been told that I, I've been told that my picture is hanging on several walls in Newington, <laughs> in the middle of a dartboard. Yeah. Somehow, <laughs> somehow uh, the name Wayne Green never came up in this episode, and I'm not sure why, because it's like it would be Jermaine. I, mean, I wrote a blog post uh, that uh, one time. I said, "What would Green, Wayne Green do?" They got, uh, a, got kind of a chuckle. Yeah, because uh, uh, he took the know, old guy. Uh, Wayne Green would be taking uh, not pot shots. He'd be taking you know full um, yeah. shotgun blasts at something like this. And I don't know. Did 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 anybody think that he ever really kept the ARL in line at all? Oh, good question. He kept them on their toes. Um, he, he, maybe he, um, had a, a, uh, an effective within the amateur community, keeping, um, a, a balance in pro and con, it, you know, Wayne was like us. He, he was a member and he didn't, he never advocated quitting. He advocated change. It's just that he was crazy as a loon <laughs> and, um, you know, and, and wrote a, at the conspiracy theory level of writing and extensively, you know, it's almost like somebody doing a podcast that went an hour and a half. Almost. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sitting, I'm thinking to myself, I'm sitting here in my garage, seven thirty on a Sunday night with three lights pointing on my face. <laughs> That's what television is all about. You know, yeah, it's all good. Yeah. And, and we're going to keep at this. Us East Coasters, you know, it's 1030. You know, Sunday yeah, night. it's 1030 could have been, for you guys. Could have yeah. been watching football. Well, so, you know, talking about keeping at it. So the question then is like, really, was what's next? Yeah, yeah. So that's that would be another show. That would be a next show or yeah. next in the series or something. Well, mm-hmm. there, there are people that um, think that they will be able to talk to us more candidly mm-hmm. uh, in, in the uh, ambiguous future. Yeah, but you know, a soon few enough, more leaks out of the yeah. out of the whole thing. Well, and yeah, yeah I, and uh, what what uh, um, uh, makes me happy is that no one came to no. me and said they wanted to talk off the record because I can't talk to people off the record. I can't remember what's off the record and what's not. I can mm-hmm. sort of remember what's going to be background. And people said, "Yeah, you can use this. Just don't attribute it to me." So it's those people familiar with the matter. Um, there will be a lot more of that. I mean, our, our, my mailbox anyway, and David's, maybe yours, Rich, is, is going to fill up again. Uh, yeah, I, I have some, and I'm, you know, I'm just kind of keeping it 
because I know people yeah. I like and care about, and I cannot throw them under the bus. Yeah, and and there is there's I think there is the conspiracy theory element out there, and always has been. <laughs> um, you know the the you know the tinfoil hat anti ARL contingent. They will once this episode is out, they will write hundreds of responses in qrz.com. And you know, and but all those people that say, "Oh, you shouldn't join the ARL because of our our episode," they didn't watch it, or they didn't get it, or yeah. they yeah. were too stupid, or all of the above. They yep. just read the headline, and like like the yeah. the ham radio is killing millennials article. Everybody just read the headline and immediately sent me all the hate mail, and, <laughs> and I'm like, just just read the article. So, <laughs> yeah, look on the Reddit. Look on the QRZ. <clears throat> it's, it's so uh, it's so abundant. It's it's silly. Yeah. And, what was that all about? The the. Killing millennials or killing millennials? <laughs> yeah. Millennials killing ham radio. Line yeah. them up. Was, line them up and. Kill. <laughs> it was just kind of a a, a poke on um, how amateur radio is just aging, and they've gotten really behind on the times. But things like Faraday RF and Zigbee, Laura, Laura's uh, the um, long range, um, not amateur radio, but it's long range digital radio uses the chirp algorithm or chirp, uh, um, m- m- what's it called modulation. That got forked over to Laura Ham, so now there's a ham radio version. And then um, hackathons, um, the Ada Laura has taken and started supporting maker fairs. You know, this is you know pretty far in the past, like 2007 past. Um, I I remember doing a video at the Kansas City Maker Fair, I think in 2000. I don't know. I have to look at my YouTube. Um, and we had a field day site there, and the Ada had representation, and now they have representation all over the place. And so I guess the point is technology is taking over ham radio again. Um, and now the like, makers of today are the hams of what was past. Like those who collected computers and started the first packet radio networks. Those are now the you know guys like, I don't know, Bob Brignaga still trying to hold the APRS network together and all that. Instead of those guys, today's hams are the makers and hackers and the, and the guys doing Arduino stuff and Raspberry Pi stuff and all this RF interconnecting. It's no longer really about people-to-people communication. It's machine-to-machine. And people can be at those machines, but it's really a computer between you know the two of them and a transparent link uh, between them. So that's pretty much the gist of it. Ham radio is moving in that direction, and I have you know evidence that, and I posit, like, we should do hackathons. We should have, like, a quick 24, 48-hour session to code a new APRS app or make logging better because, I mean, there's a million different logging programs. Why not have a few more? <laughs> or, better yet, just connect them all into one place. Um, it doesn't even have to be hacking or coding. It just be, like, aggregating all of these things that, you know, we just come across all the time into one place, you know, make it a, um, make it a uh, sort of like Wikipedia sort of thing. Yeah. Lots We're- of ideas there. But, but people read it for the headline, Millennials are killing ham radio, as in ham radio is dying, <laughs> as in... Tomorrow we're not going to contest or we're not going to have AWRL or anything anymore. But I never said that. In fact, the first paragraph was like, ham radio is growing. Licenses are, you know, on the boom, on the on the increase. Um, contest logs are always at, at a, I don't, I don't know if they're on all-time high, but they're super high, like CQ Worldwide and, and other things. But as we're going down in the solar cycle, even though we're going down in the solar cycle, the, the log submissions are still pretty high. So, yeah. this, Even on CW, right, Rich? Even more on CW than uh, than sideband. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and the great thing is we've got you know everybody here is really contributing in one way or the other. You know, you know, Sterling, you're the voice of of youth, whether you're a youth or not anymore. And you know, CQ and and the stuff that Dan does. You know, you know, like as I said in the last show, you know, before I was a ham, I knew Dan's name and and had your book or at least your PDF. You know, and I'm not sure how Gary and I contribute, but we'll figure that out. <laughs> oh, you guys do too, sure. Dragging you collect things. all of us together to rant about dragging things into a black hole. Radio, yeah. So, Sterling, what about people like me that are not so much? You know, my my interest in ham radio is has only been technical to the point where I could put together radios and antennas and systems, but I'm not uh-huh. engineer. You know, I I consider myself to be king of the appliance operators. Yeah. I'm a very yeah. I'm an appliance operator, but I'm a very very good one. Rich, uh, you're kind of in that category too, right? You're well, you know, I have recently, last five six years, gotten heavily into kit building and QRP and stuff like that, and stuff that I, I never thought that I really would get into again. Um, you're just trying to I'm make Joe Eisenberg happy. Seeing yes, <laughs> um, but uh, well, but 
you know, reading his column every month and reading the QRP columns and the, the features and stuff in our, our field special and our QRP specials, reading all this stuff really has inspired me to get into this aspect of the hobby. And uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying building like I never really have before. Um, and uh, Is kit building really and- technical? No, I'm not designing the circuits. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, but it, you're fixing it, them when they that's break. Far yeah. beyond, right? right? That's, but, um, but, you know, that's I guess gateway, that's the gateway drug. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess it, a better um, question is: at what level is you know, building technical? It's medium technical. I mean, you, you have to be able to identify the parts and figure out where to put them on the circuit board, and, um, and do it and do it correctly. And and then yeah, and uh, but that leads you know somebody just said it's gateway drug, I also built a couple of little tiny amplifier and filter things that were not a kit um, that I had to cut out little pieces of circuit board and mount on a ground pl- circuit plane circuit board ground plane and figure out the layout of the circuit on the board there um, which is something I'd never done before and that was a lot of fun a whole additional aspect of building um what will i ever get into designing circuits probably not um because it's it's not something that i know well enough and have enough knowledge about but building other people's circuits yeah that's that's a lot of fun Mm -hmm. um so so that leaves me as the appliance operators (laughs) well (laughs) (laughs) I I, i just got a qsl card yesterday in fact from uh a station in uh Czech Republic, who I had uh, contacted on my Rockmite half watt transmitter, um, for uh, qualified me for the QRP ARCI's uh, thousand mile per watt award. It was he's forty what forty one hundred miles away, and uh, so at half a watt that came to eighty two hundred miles per watt, and that's pretty impressive. What band did you do that on? <laughs> Thirty, 30 and, meters. Okay, so CW or one of the data modes. CW. It's pretty good. The, yeah, the little <laughs> rock might, uh, I don't think, can handle anything other than CW. <laughs> yeah. Well, so to answer your question, Gary, Beth, like, what about us appliance operators? Like, you know, I think next generation of appliance operators are, are, are configuration engineers, guys who are, you have, like, ubiquity gear. Like, let me, let me dig out of my... Uh, Go. This is an appliance. It has an antenna that plugs into one end and an Ethernet on the other. It's a Mikrotik router, and this can be used as a ham radio. Um, I don't know if this particular unit can, but point is, mesh networking um, is run by appliances, and um, it doesn't have to be these kinds of things. Faraday RF, for example, in the hold, future. Hold that up and hold it still. It's wandering, you know, going way too fast for people to see it. Okay. Yeah. Groove, Microtech Groove, A52 HPN. And what, HP. what band is it? This is a 5.2 gig. Okay. And you and, and can be dialed into the ham band up there. Yeah, I think so. If if not, it's still, I mean, it shares, like there's a the shared portion, so it's, it, it's, it can. It's in the ham band. I don't know if you can put the ham software on those like you can some mm-hmm. of the other units. Like the rockets, you can put the ham, the art yeah. in or some of the I think these mesh. are similar. I, I've got a, yeah, they're similar. I, I have... If I turn my camera around, I have some of the um, nano units on the wall here that we yeah. use for some of the races and some other bits and pieces we've played with. But this is the background of the ham win in Europe. Like mm-hmm. these, I think it's almost all, it's not all Mikrotik, but the majority of devices are Mikrotik. This thing costs, I think, $60, $70, $80 new. Um, and it's an appliance, and, and you have to go in and configure it, and that's pretty difficult. But, you know, that's the new appliance operator of, well... You know the next generation, and I was going on about Faraday RF and um, um, Laura and Zigbee and Bluetooth. All these things have the you know property of meshing, and and there's this huge like interest in decentralizing and and making the internet uh, free and peer to peer meshed and all that. And there's a there's an overlap that hams can capitalize on to connect these people who are super interested in meshing who want to get started doing you know mesh networks in their communities 
with uh, the basics of radio, like you know how to make a link budget or you know how what what the Fresnel zones are, um, all of that technical background that you learn through osmosis and ham radio. So that's kind of like what I what I envision the future and what I what my personal goal is to to do in that realm in my, one of my hands. Yeah. What does ham radio give those people? Does it is it spectrum? Um, that. But Before I mean, you although, start answering that, I'm going to have to say goodbye to everybody. So right. good night. Thanks and so much for joining us. Yes, we right. we appreciate Bye -bye. your Thank participation, you, Rich. Thanks. You'll, Bye. -bye. You'll be back. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Bye. Bye. -bye. So um, so I can I can comment a little bit a, a little bit there. Um, you know the the contribution and yes, it's it's an appliance and from the Aries hat that I wear, adding these kinds of tools to what we can do. Oh, you've got a. No, bring him back. You got the yeah, ghost of Rich. You got one. Oh, the, the ghost or no? I was talking about the cat that was climbing up the back of the oh. wire cast there. <laughs> uh, the uh, the whole thing could disappear at any moment. You know, we we've been going. You know, we've been we're not there yet, but we've been moving away from FM voice to uh, appliances like Sterling showing you. Um, in Aries, because what our served agencies want is, yes, they want to get a message through, but what they really want is to be able to get this thing to work because they're addicted to this just like my millennial kids are, mm -hmm. right? And what they need to do is be able to open this up and look at their email and send an email out to the people that they work with and get the information and get this stuff. <clears throat> and with those kinds of appliances on the ham, in the ham spectrum, um, I can connect them even if we're in an area that doesn't have connectivity anymore for whatever disastrous reason to outside so that they can use those tools. Yeah. Right. And that we've and, been saying for a few years, that's what, that's what they want. And that, and that is exactly what they want. Some tactical and, voice communication. You know, that's needed. But. Well, it will always, you know, it will always come down to, and as, as we talk about in a lot of the MCOM extra shows, it'll always, you know, boil down to the lowest common denominator, which is, you know, FM voice on, you know, UHF, VHF, and, and that's what it'll be. And, you know, the challenge with the digital mode, the, the D star, the DMR, the system confusion, all those other bits is that you can't force anybody to go with one, but they'll always have that, that rollback. But, um, as we get more technically astute or, or realize that we have to bridge into these other things to be able to provide the service, um, we will be a, will be a better service. Right. And the, um, you know, the whole, what's the, um, 18 T thing they're rolling out first net. Is it first net? I yeah. think that's it. Yeah. That's supposed to solve every problem and, and make, make us totally, you know, Redundant, redundant or useless or, or whatever it is. Yeah, obsolete. That's that's the word. Um, I, I will be sitting waiting out in the parking lot for the batteries <laughs> to die for them to come out looking for us when they say, oh, no, go. We got first net. We're all good to go. You know, we'll just we'll go out and make some coffee and hang out and chat a little bit. And when the batteries die or this doesn't work, they'll, they'll come looking for us. As um. I mean, we got to be expecting things getting harder and harder, hard, hardened, hardening harder and harder on everybody else's systems. And, you know, our opportunity for being the only thing that's, that's working is going to get less, but sure. It'll, it'll, it'll uh, still happen. Now. Yeah, it will. It will happen. Yep. Um, I wanted to mention here at the very tail end when no one is watching, that um, QRZ.com has come up with a new place for videos and podcasts. <clears throat> Used to be we all tossed our stuff into the general news bin. Okay. And oh. I noticed this came up here, this uh, member contributed content. But there's a problem. Um, when, when I put something on, in the general news, it sort of depended on the, on the subject matter, but I could count on hundreds and hundreds of people seeing it, and maybe out of them, dozens to hundreds actually looking at the video and you know, getting a bunch of comments. Um, and, and some of them, a lot of comments. Uh, here in the videos and podcasts zone, Nada. 35, yeah. 35 people have seen the Ham Radio Now preview show. <laughs> And if you look at, at the other folks, you know, it's in the sub 100 for most of them. 
except for this uh, official opening of the BBC, BBC radio thing. Yeah, that was a pretty big deal. But, yeah. But you see that also in Hamcasters. Once you once you split off the, the main, I don't know, teat of members and, and, yeah. and uh, video viewership, then you... Yeah, Hamcasters happens. doesn't and get it's it never right. gonna And it's never going to get back to where it is. And, the, and we we debate about that on the Amateur Radio subreddit. Like, oh, you, we should start our own subreddit for antennas or for DXing. Well... Go ahead, but you're only going to have six people, and then it's going to go defunct, and, <laughs> yeah. and Except just for the, keep the it all in one place. Bofeng one. It, yeah, it, was Bofeng. there any was was there anything in the in the um, original QRZ group in the news group to say, hey, you got to start moving your stuff elsewhere? Because um, look, I, I I still think of what we're doing. You know, I know we're not news media, but I think what we're doing this show is news. And right. maybe not all maybe not all of our shows are news or maybe they are I don't know. Yeah, they um, they didn't change anything in this. This is the uh the sticky okay. that's at the at the top of the news thing. Um and it's not real long and there's nothing that says it just so it, it just may says be, it may be moved at the editor's discretion. Right, that's it. Mm-hmm. So I okay. you know, I did I the try and submit one and see if he moves it. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. They so, did that to mine. They moved it from news down to I think uh, ham radio discussions, but it's still got a lot of a lot of views. And discussions comments. does seem to to get people. It's just this thing. <laughs> yeah. This thing, first of all, has has no higher visibility. You don't see it on the main page right anywhere. There on the right. Well, just well, just so when we do one that's news, like this was news. Maybe the preview wasn't news. Right. We'll put it put it there until they tell us we can't put it there anymore. Yeah, so it was it was an experiment, um, yeah. and yep. So that's that's you know what I plan to do. Something that deserves lots of exposure. I'll put it in their news. I thought maybe since they made this a you know smaller deal, because right now they re- they're moderating it. Most of the other discussion groups, you put something up, it appears right away. Um, and I thought maybe that would happen with the podcasts and videos, but it still required moderation. So. On the one hand, I can see that they're the main news thing had turned into fifty percent announcing people's programs, um, and right. and yeah. and that's why the Hamcasters exists because you try you try to do that on Reddit, and you will get slapped down fast. I think um, I think uh, NT one K or NT one K. He's like one of the mods. He he cleared it, clarified it as you can do that. So long as you're not spamming. And I think once you're like going for every single blog saying like, here's my thing, here's my thing, here's my right. thing, here's my thing. That's one thing. But as, if you do it once every so often, or if you do it specifically to solicit comments and, you know, get a discussion going, I think that's fair. You know, that's, yeah, this, this one I'll I will up. put up in the main amateur radio Reddit position and, and you mm-hmm. know, and cross post to hamcasters. Um, and, but but for if if we put every one of Ham Radio Now shows, which are yeah, you know one one a week or more, you know that would quickly become don't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it, what Ano Ano talked about because yeah. he was posting all his stuff, and then some commenters are like, "Oh, put it in Hamcasters, get it out of here." We don't ever see this. <laughs> At least they recognized there was a Hamcasters. Here. Yeah, I mean it's it's one of those things too. Like it just said, nobody will know about it. It'll be in the sidebar, but nobody reads the sidebar. Yeah. Nobody reads the rules. Nobody reads all that. So, stuff, so so once in a while, I'll put a, a post in the main Reddit Ham Radio Amateur Radio, and there's two. There's Ham Radio, which is kind of small, and Amateur Radio, which is kind of big. And I'll mm-hmm. put something in there that says, "Oh, by the way, Hamcasters exists." And usually, I <laughs> yeah. add something else. The other thing that they want you to yeah. do over on Reddit is to do more than just announce your shows to engage the community with other stuff. So whenever I go by, I, I try to look at a couple of uh, Reddit posts that have something that I can contribute, something I know about and, you know, go look and see what some of the answers are. And if the answers are already really good, then I'll stay away. But if the answers are, are floundering, looking for some experience and something I know about, I'll go in and I'll do a TLDR. Definitely TLDR. Too long. Yeah, I, I do that a lot too, and that yep. usually will get floated to the top, and you know. Yep. But and I get some, some nice comments. Comment. You know, those guys. Yeah. Like, Thank you for explaining that. Yeah, I really didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. There's always a weekly like question and answer thread, and I I peruse those quite a bit. And those a lot of those go unanswered for a while, so it's always good to. I should look more at that. 
Yeah. Okay. Have we stretched it to uh, two hours yet? We're getting close. Minutes away. <laughs> Down to 13. And it's, it's, it's getting pretty late there. Long- we hit we hit 20 at one point. Wow. wow. Oh, 15 That's- now. Ooh. Yeah, and and some twenty good is a world's the, record, right? Some some good comments in the chat room and uh, what, check-ins. I got a, on I got a pit, yep, I got a couple of yeah. I asked for check-ins when we hit fifteen <laughs> or eighteen. I want to see who was there. I got a couple of them. You know, and, talking about the chat room, we need an Amanda. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah. and that's and I and I feel bad actually. Jim Jim uh, Jim said you got to look at the camera every once in a while because Gary's going to think you're ignoring him or doing something else. And like Gary knows I'm running chat room. <laughs> yeah, I gotta do what I gotta do is I gotta pull the chat room from this monitor to to this monitor. I gotta figure out how to split the screen in front of me. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't look do. at the camera. You know, when I'm oh, when I've got yeah. this this shot, um, I'm looking like this. Now I deliberately laid things out so it looks like I'm looking at you guys. Yeah, which which is what I am. If you look at it this way, I'm looking at you. And then if I you know switch myself up, I'll look over like that. But then right. if I'm looking at the monitor that's got you guys on it. That's, that's the view. And yep. uh, you can see it better here and here. This is ham radio. Now <laughs> the that? only ham radio show with a six camera set. <laughs> no, 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 no. We have, um, I have three more. Oh, <laughs> you, Although we're not, we're not running. Them you're long, add, so. adding three more to the mix. I am adding yeah. three more to the mix. And people are saying, well, I saw a better way to place this camera. Because everything, I, if I look at the screen, it looks like I'm looking at the ceiling. Yeah. Well, and that's, it's hard. It's hard. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like down here. It's like I have to put the camera right in the middle of the monitor. Yeah, but, but I guess my point is you don't, look up yourself. unless you're dr- addressing the audience directly, mm-hmm. uh, you don't need to be looking. And, and that's kind of what I do. Like I know that when I, when I get to the point where I, you know, you bring me up full screen or I go on a little tirade, I will try to look up at the little blue lights here. And and just ignore the chat room, and then I'll go back to it a little later yeah. on. Yeah, if you look or at do the, what, um, do what Casey Neistat does. He he admitted to why he wears glasses when he does his videos. He's Casey Neistat's this mega YouTube blogger guy. Um, he does it because his lens is down here, or his uh, his monitor is down here, but his lens is up here. So he doesn't want to always be trying to look at the the camera lens because he's trying to frame a shot and make a story happen based on the framing. So he's always looking down there, but he doesn't want to distract. So he wears distracting yeah. sunglasses. Yeah, the, the big that. the big time folks, um, they have the teleprompter um, things in front right. of the cameras, and they'll also feed the video of someone they're talking to. So that's why the anchors on the newscasts can be looking like that mm-hmm. and be seeing the person they're talking to. And often the person that they're talking to sees nothing. Right, you know, they're just, just looking, staring straight yeah, they, at the camera. They can yeah. hear. If, if there, they're in another a, studio, they can see something. But if they're out on the there's street. A little, there's a little post-it note that says, stare here, please. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm losing my cat. <clears throat> okay. So um, okay. we're seconds we away two. from two hours. Yep. And, um, yeah. <laughs> and, and as I, I believe that a, a good portion of that was the best part of the program. So I don't know. The, the meta talking about all the setup and yeah. stuff. I was actually curious. Dan is about. I'm sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, as I, I was just gonna say, I was actually curious about syndication. Like, I know you guys do it on Facebook, and I see <laughs> he's laughing already. But like, what a is it hard for Wireshack to go Facebook, YouTube, even Periscope, maybe Twitch, like all these other things? Or are you just like focused on one thing because it's easy or what? Um, I'm, I'm, Wire, Wirecast uh, will not let me send to Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, there may be a way to, to jeep that and get it done, and I, I shouldn't, haven't even looked it up. Um, and I'm not sure why I chose Facebook. We've got a Facebook group that's got about 2,500 members in it right now. Yeah. Uh, you, what, yeah. YouTube's got 10,500 subscriptions, but we never get 10,000 people watching a show. So oh, yeah. And those subscriptions. I, have, I have 900, maybe, th- I think I broke 1,000 subscriptions on my YouTube channel, and I make a video and I get 50 views. It's not like they're all... Yeah, you know, getting notified, and it's the YouTube algorithm too. It's not, you know. Yep. Um, well, it, it, you know, I think, I think, I think what we're doing it, it's for for us, it's the right way. And maybe, yeah. there may be other other social media that is more where the folks are more in tuned, you know, for your demographic. Um, True. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm going after. Yeah, and that that might be the case. But I think for us, is you know, we have a pretty engaged 
you know, Facebook group and audience. And, and as you said, Gary, it's a smaller group, but we'll have, you know, people watching live and people will watch over time. And then, you know, later on, the rest of them will get it on YouTube. And I don't think anybody's yeah. like waiting, waiting at home. Where's the YouTube? Where's the YouTube? Where's the YouTube? Yeah. yeah. Um, they get it when they plus, get it. Plus, we are not on a regular schedule. Yes. Although uh, I, I like am. Sunday night yeah. at nine o'clock. <laughs> Works out pretty <laughs> yeah, well. It seems a lot to be of people working okay. Kind of available, but I don't, I don't expect we're going to do most shows. I'm home then. Yeah. Dan yeah. is Dan is sitting there saying this television stuff is a fad. It's gonna. <laughs> yeah. It'll know. never take. No, you know. In fact, I was trying to think how how I could do more videos, but man, it seems like so, so much work. Yep. Well, um, <laughs> that's why I don't do enough. Yeah, it sort of depends on what you're doing. That's why I do mostly these uh, talking head shows, which yeah. are you know essentially radio shows. And, and people say, yeah, well, you, you know, see guys, you see these guys that are doing the unboxings and all that stuff. And, you know, I, I think that's but they great. get the views. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. hard. I mean, it's hard. First off, it's hard to frame the shots, I think. And yeah, you well, do need and, to, and, yeah maybe just because I never got it. I don't, and there's know. a yeah. ton. Those people that do those unboxing, there is a ton of post-production stuff that they have to do. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You know, they've got it, 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 they get it wrong, and then they got to do the voiceover, and then they got to edit, and then they got to throw in the, you know, the the words, and then they got to clip it all. To, yeah, that's. Yeah. I got first hand yeah. experience. I've got a, I've been doing a Gotenna unboxing for like the last since I got them, <laughs> like for like three months, and I'm like, uh, it's just I don't want to get around to doing it because what am I going to say about it? What am I going to do this? How am I going to do this shot? I need to do do an experiment because I got a pair of Gotenna meshes, and I want to like be able to like show it off like well, how it meshes, but I only have two. I can't have a mesh with two that's just point to point so i need to go find somebody else with a mesh so there's like a lot of things going to it yeah. even when i'm like um there's a, one of my favorite videos i did in terms of it was almost like a news release was the baker fair kansas city i was talking about earlier like um i sounded like a, a, 50, a more like a 10 year old girl when i did it but you know i, I sp took a lot of time to take a lot of b-roll a lot of uh you he's, know he still does sound shot. like a 10 year old girl <laughs> And, uh, and, uh, yeah, I spent a lot of time on it and, and it was, it was fun. It was rewarding. Did get, you know, I didn't get many views, many comments, which is what I'm, that's my payment. I'm not paid by, you know, YouTube ad revenue or anything. I, I want to see that I'm actually influencing and doing so. I did a thing on sweepstakes this, uh, past couple weekends ago and, um, still got that video sitting on my hard drive. It's going to take a while to put together and build a story out of it. It's not about mashing a bunch of, clips together in a big two hour long thing it's about making a story and yeah. that usually comes in a short form so I, I went up to the 10th anniversary of the last big field day w3ao um mm -hmm. it's now well it would have been uh, 2014 and uh and recorded that I, I did the first one it was i'll call it the 10th anniversary because I, I went up in 2004 and did the last big field day which was the last time the arl allowed Unlimited number of, uh, 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 yeah, of, uh, yeah. of additional stations. And, and so they were in the 50 some category. It wasn't, they had, the league uh, still allows all those stations. You just can't claim bonus point credit for having them. Mm -hmm. You can, you can claim the contact, but all those stations only made one contact, uh, per mode. So, um, that's how they got up into the fifties. So now W3AO is, is in the um, 20, 20, 20, 25 transmitter. And most of those are more legitimate, uh, maybe completely legitimate, uh, but they still blow everybody away. They still, you know, win by 10,000 points. Um, so I did that in 2004 and I got the DVD out to the public in 2011. <laughs> <laughs> and so I went up in 2014 and did the 10th anniversary of the last big field day and it's still sitting on the hard drives waiting for me to edit and you know someday i'd like to well i'm hoping in january i can start carrying some weight and you can spend some time doing that well yeah and uh, you're gonna have to because i have another show that i want to do that is not ham radio at all and i yep. need to put serious focus into that right after the first yep. of the year so i'm gonna I'm not going to disappear, but I'm going to be a much lighter presence and it's, you know, hand the reins over to you as much as you're willing to take them. And I think you're pretty interested. Um, you know, I'm there. And if, you know, if you're looking for co-hosts, uh, you know, look, look above you in the monitor for a second and 
Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yep. yeah. And maybe Marty yeah. will, and, 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 and you can bring in Sam, the ham kid. Right. Um, and uh, you know, there'll probably be no shortage. No, no, I'm not too worried about it. Yep. And meanwhile, I'll be doing a political show here locally in the Raleigh area called the Triangle Talk Show. And uh, trying to affect the next set of elections. And I'm not going to say which way because it makes hams mad. <laughs> it's the newspaper state uh, situation like that. Is it all online? Um, we, we've got the, the, uh, the News and Observer in Raleigh, which is still publishing a thin um, paper issue. And, and they have declared themselves to be a digital media company that, that prints a newspaper. But um, it's kind of hard to tell what's really working for them. They've sold their building and, you know, all the economic things that are right. indicating that, that uh, and, the, and they've gotten rid of tons of reporters and almost no columnists left. So, you know, they're, they're just cutting as much close to the bone and hopefully not too much meat, but they've cut a lot of meat. So, yeah, it's bad. Um, so that's where maybe there's a, that opportunity. Yeah, oh, it's not going to, it's, it's, <clears throat> we're not going to light anything on fire in, in the local community any more, any more than ham radio now, now is done in the ham radio community. But I've, it's, you know, it's, it's got, it's got my interest. You know, uh, this is, this is a, a peak political time in media. I, but I also don't want that show to be he- heavy, heavy political, you know, just hammering, um, ideology uh i want to do a mix of you know, just ordinary life and and uh you know nice. social social stuff um and you know make it palatable uh, i also don't want it to be i mean i'm left-leaning but i don't want it to be a left-wing diatribe i want to you know, i'm a center left and um i want to engage people that you know are feeling like eh, everything political is just hammering me over the head political you know, so maybe I can do something that is not quite so hammer you over the head. <clears throat> I think I have some talents there. I don't know. We'll see. I know. Yes. I'll come crawling right. back, David. I'm going to sleep too. Yes. Yeah, you're That's in. Right. We'll, you're we'll in Michigan, you. but we'll you're still you. uh, still Easter, Eastern Eastern yeah. time. Eastern time. Yeah. yeah. So you're 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 in you're back not east. Okay. What what part of the state are you in? It Hold your right? hand up and show us. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, well, wait a second. Is that right? Yeah. So okay. Like right around Detroit. Still, southeast still, but, you know, we're 50 miles west of Detroit, downtown okay. Detroit. Ann Arbor area, I guess. Yeah. Okay. So I um, was born in Detroit. Oh, there you go. What yeah. side of town? Eight Mile Road. Eight Mile and what? Woodward. Oh, in between in of, between Woodward and the John west. Lodge, I'm an east. I'm an east side. You know, in Detroit, you're either east side or a west side. Yeah, and and if you're east of Woodward, you're east side. If you're west, you're west. But if you are near Woodward, then it was between Detroit Woodward and, and the me. Woodward and the John Lodge. Yeah. Now yeah. keep in mind that I was 12 when I left, and so I didn't drive on any of those roads. Yeah, and, yeah, but that's the use. That still comes. Yep. When I um. When I lived there, in the last four years, we moved to Southfield, yeah. and just pretty much on the other side of Eight Mile, the very south end of Southfield, yeah. and right across from the Northland Shopping Center. Yeah. And they were building no, the, you, the you expressway. Did they tear it down? They're getting, it's not yet, but it's <laughs> going to be shortly. I mean, it's old. Talking about changes, you know, yeah. that's big change. When when I lived there, it was all open air. And then I came back and visited decades later, and it had been closed in, sort of. Yeah. Although the open air external walls were still there, it just had a roof over it. I thought right. that looked pretty weird. Right. Um, and uh, that's interesting. I yeah. didn't know that they were they were building the uh, Northwest Expressway, and so our friends and I would ride bikes because it hadn't been opened yet. Yeah. So we would go from eight mile up to uh, I think twelve mile was our limit. Yep. So not very far. <laughs> no. Yep. And then as a uh, as an adult, as a a teen and then young adult, uh, when I lived in Chicago, a friend had a cottage up by Shelby, 
which is uh, just north of Muskegon, the very western part. And so what I know is that in um, in the summertime, uh, I, well, I guess in when daylight saving time is still happening, and you're sitting on the western side of the state, on the eastern shore of Lake Michigan, it's still daylight at 10.45 p.m. It's like, you know, it's like, like living in Alaska. <laughs> it's very weird. I like it. I, that, people complain about daylight savings time, but man, how cool is it? Stays late till 10 o'clock here? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's in the camp that's, that thinks that we should just declare that year round. And, you know, yeah, I don't know about year round because, you know, it's pretty short days. But, well, but, yeah. but, like, it, like it, when they did that, you know, like I'm old enough, right? That when Nixon declared daylight savings time year round there for a while. I mean, it didn't get light till like nine o'clock in the morning. That's that's not good. Well, who cares? Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, you're still driving to work in the dark now. Yeah. If you're going to work at eight, I don't eight, drive eight, to work. Yeah. Well, I don't either. But and we need to come up with a solution where we just roll the clocks every, you know, go by the sun. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm I'm weird when it comes to time. I hate I hate daylight. Well, I, well, I kind of like it. I like the the shift, and you know, but. What can we do better? I think the uh, the best the, the best uh, thing that will never happen that I've heard is that we all just go on Zulu time and you adjust <laughs> for your local area. You know, I go to work at uh, what would it be? Oh uh, five hundred Zulu instead of oh nine hundred um, local. Um, always the same time everywhere, huh? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's always it's the same time everywhere, but we just you know when we are operating within that clock for our daylight. It would be hard to travel in that. And, and so when I went to New York, yeah, interesting. And, um, and but every then, every time it is, I gotta go to sleep. And, and we switch to the metric system yeah. at the same time. Yeah, I think you're right, Dan. I think it's probably time to call it. We we made our almost made two fifteen now. I got any hard drive space left here? Oh, I forgot I was still, on a, this on a podcast. This thing's still, <laughs> is this thing still recording? Are yeah. we still there? Apparently it hey, is. If anybody actually sees this, send me an email. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, there's a few people that hang I, into the end. I mean, oh, what, there'll be there'll I be people listen. there at the end. Don't offer listen. to give anything away for free, Dan, because you'll get people <laughs> hitting up. Yep. Well, I can get my free study guide. My study yeah, guide. Oh, it's okay. always been free. There you go. Yep. That's All how, right. Good night. That's how David got night, his uh, you know, start. Okay. See you, Dan. Bye bye. Yep. See you. I'm gonna I'm gonna bow out as well. Yep. That's what I need to finish and. Then I gotta go whack to work. Yep. Yeah, you guys have so, jobs. Yeah. Actually, tomorrow tomorrow's um, tomorrow's off for me because I gotta work next Saturday for a move. Well, it's only eight fifteen where you are. Yeah. And prime time is well, just. Started. I gotta be. I gotta be at the. At, I gotta be up at four for the gym though. Keep working on my thinner, newer body. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I, I get up. Eight o'clock, yeah, you know, about nine thirty. I hit the local, uh, you know, the home gym, and uh, get done with that. Get showered, go get lunch, come back, put in a good solid two or three hours working on something, <laughs> and then the day is over. <laughs> Be nice. Well, I'm Can't 60, wait for that time. I'm sixty-eight now. I would wait for it as long as you possibly can. Okay. Yeah. All right, hanging up on you guys. See ya. All right, All have right. a good one. Seven three. Bye. Thanks for the episode. Okay, Facebook, YouTube, just you and me. I got. I guess I got to go look and see if there's anybody left. Let's see. Where's the thing? Oh, I turned the thing on. No, the thing is there. This thing that finds the ham radio now group for me. Okay. Ah, somebody wants to join. Let's see if we can pick somebody up here right on. John Fanzier. <laughs> Saw a live broadcast just now, I'm, I'm guessing. And uh, so you're in, John. And now. Do I have to push the play button? No, 15 people. 
Really? 15 people still watching? How can that be? So let's see if any comments appear. How do I do this? Make it big, click to enlarge. Jim Aspinwall says, fun as always. K5ARN. K5ARN, your name is Arnie, not k 5 and Can't read what that says. <laughs> so folks are leaving. And there were a lot of comments. But is anyone typing one now? I'm not seeing it. See, I don't know if I'm doing this right. I'm not seeing a time on these. I thought, oh, maybe if I make this uh, full screen, then things float across. And you can uh, click those hearts and things that go floating across. I'm, confu I'm confusing myself seeing myself do things about 10 seconds after I've done them. It's very weird. Yes, I'm getting dizzy. The Hall of Mirrors. So, all right, get back to uh, Wirecast and get ready to make things go away. First, it is goodbye, Facebook. Thanks for watching. And goodbye, Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.